In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up your FL Digi for winter field day. Hello, John W7DBO here with the Field Radio Podcast. If you want to learn more about getting your gear and getting it outdoors, click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Winter Field Day is coming this weekend, and so I thought I would shoot this quick video, and so you can learn how to set up your FL Digi software for Winter Field Day. So let's get on the computer. Okay, so I have my FL Digi open here, and you'll notice that I'm in FL Digi version 4.0.15. That's the latest version available at this time. So always make sure you have the most recent version of the software so you can see some of these features. So I'm going to go here into uh, configure and set this up. So configure, contest logging, contest. And then here you'll see uh, fill day option put your call in. Now your class is different because regular field day is class, but we're category, but you can go ahead and use this class. So I'm one India, I'm one station indoor and my section is Utah. So I'm just going to use my class and category interchangeably. I'm going to turn on the contest logging for field day. I'm going to do the single click to capture receiving word, and I'm going to clear all fields with call capture. So I'll save that and close. Now what that did for us is I have this call up here. I'm going to single left click. In fact, let me clear this out up here. So you notice everything is cleared out up here. I'm going to single left click on the call and it's going to populate the call sign in the call field. I'm going to single left click on the class slash uh, category. That's my second click is going to populate the class. And then my third click left click is going to populate this section. And so as long as you go in that order, click, 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 uh, that is going to auto populate your information up here. Now we check that other box that says clear this on new call. So if I come over here on W7DBO and click that, notice how now the class and section have been cleared. This is a great feature to make sure you don't accidentally carry over class and section from one call sign to the next, especially when you're doing dupes. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and click over here again on this and then left click again and left click again. Now I could right click and say call, right click say FD class, right click say FD section, that's an option, but it's a lot faster uh, working your contacts this way. Now, because it's done that, I have some I have some macro set up. So we're gonna go to the assumption that uh, KC7 IVS was actually the one doing the CQ calling. So I'm gonna use my answer macro. And if I right click on that, it's going to be transmit call, which is my call and DE or their call, DE my call. Please copy one India, Utah, one India, Utah, my call QSL receive mode. And so we'll go ahead and hit that. So I'll say KC7 IVS, this is W7DBO. Please copy one India, Utah, one India, Utah, W7DBO QSL question mark. Go into receive mode. So they will come back uh, and give me a confirmation and hopefully they, they say goodbye at that point. And if they say bye, and because they were the ones that were calling, uh, they were calling uh, CQ, I'm going to use my buy macro, which is transmit uh, their call, my call, Roger, you are, and it's going to plug in that field day class, field day section. Good luck, happy hunting, my call, receive. And so we'll go ahead and hit that macro to say goodbye to them. KC7 IVS, this is W7DBO, Roger, you are to Oscar, Colorado. Good luck, happy hunting, W7DBO. Very simple, very short. Don't hit the brag button. Don't hit tell everybody what your antenna is. Um, in contesting, you want to get in and get out and get it nice and sweet because people are probably waiting to make contact. So that's pretty much how you do a contact with uh, if they're calling CQ. Now, say you're the one uh, controlling that channel and you're calling CQ. So I have a CQ, CQ macro set up. CQ, CQ, winter field day. My call, my call, P-S-E-K, receive. Now, sometimes you'll see they repeat this line twice. But in contesting, uh, if I don't hear anything after a second, I'm just going to hit this button again. And so there's no sense in running CQ, CQ, winter field day, my call, my call, P-S-E-K, CQ, CQ, winter field day. If someone's there, they're going to come back on that first answer. So I only have one in there, and so that speeds some things up. So what? let's say I do that. I'm going to clear these calls, uh, say yes. So now I'll say CQ, CQ. 
and so it's going to transmit. I'm asking winter field day, my call, my call, uh, da, 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 da. Now someone comes back to me and answers CQ, say it's this KC7 IVS. I'll right click on them or I can left click and fill them. Now, if they're a dupe, I'm going to hit this dupe macro, which says my call, your call, I show you as duplicate QSL. And so if they were a dupe, uh, I would just simply hit that because I don't even need to look at their uh, class slash category or section because I already know what it is because they're a dupe. And so that's my dupe macro. I leave this one empty because as the contest goes, I might find that I need to throw in something else. So I'm going to leave that one empty. Uh, I might need them to repeat. So I have a macro that just simply says your call, my call, say again. And so that's a, that's another one that I have. That's another macro. And then, so say we finally get the, the contact back and we know their class and section. So I'm going to say bye, but instead of saying bye, I'm going to say bye QRZ because I'm the one that was calling CQ. And so a QRZ I'm asking for the next person. So this is the same as the bye. Uh, your call, my call, Roger, you are class section. Good luck. Happy hunting, my call. And then I'm going to add that QRZ. And so that's going to prompt the next person to come back. So I don't have to call CQ again. So we're, we'll go ahead and say, because I'm the one that's running this station or this frequency. Uh, so we'll go ahead and answer that. So the other macro I have is if someone does ask me to repeat, I'm going to do this again. If they come back and they say repeat, I'm going to do your call, my call. I say again, I'm going to spell it out one indoor Utah, one indoor Utah. So if we're getting fragmented messaging, hopefully they catch the one if there's it's there twice, but spelling out indoor spelling out Utah. And then I'm going to say my call QSL. And so those are the macros I have set up. Now I have not, uh, messed with the CQ answer Q. So in those, I just kind of left those there. I've only used these, like I said, I'm leaving some open. And so this is how I set up, uh, FL digi, uh, for use for winter fill day. And this is exactly the same thing. Only I just, uh, change out winter fill day WFD for FD, uh, for fill day. So this is the same way you can use this software. So I hope you have found this helpful. Like I said, there's another video on showing you how to take FL Digi and interface it with N3 FJP software. That's going to save a lot of time on logging and especially dupe checking. And so I hope you check that out in the info card above or in the description below. I hope you found this tutorial helpful in getting your FL Digi software set up for winter field day. If you want more information about the Field Radio Podcast, please visit us at fieldradiopodcast.org to sign up for our newsletter. And as always, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss anything. So until then, enjoy winter field day, stay warm, happy hunting, 73.